So joining me now is Keith Comito, he is the president of Lifespan.io. So Keith, we're about to have a trippy conversation about life and aging. But before we do that, uh, obvious question is what is Lifespan.io? Sure, so uh, first of all, it's an honor to be here. Uh, Lifespan.io is a 501c3 nonprofit where we uh, raise funds and awareness for research aimed at extending healthy human lifespan by addressing the root causes of the aging process itself as a better way to cure diseases. So I'm in favor of living longer. Um, <laughs> I like life <laughs> and it's a fairly logical thing to want to extend it. It seems like that would be uh, one of the most important things you could do uh, because you either exist or you don't. Uh, I figured that out. Uh, so um, before we get into how you can do that, which is a really interesting and trippy part, uh, why do crowdfunding? Was, are there people working on this already? Sure. Uh, this it's basically because for a long time, up until maybe 10, 15 years ago, if you were you know, a suit and tie researcher saying that you wanted to work on the root causes of aging, uh, you would have been laughed at. And it's only very recently that there's been a paradigm shift in the industry where you know, researchers are realizing that there's, there's actually something that we can do here that you can, even though the pathologies of aging are myriad, the things that actually go wrong with you, the damages that you accumulate are relatively few. And that's a, a point for intervention and that something can be done here. So we're trying to catalyze that because the government quite, you know, hasn't quite caught up to that yet. Researchers are kind of getting there. So we're basically trying to emulate what the early cancer advocates did in the 1940s, where if you remember the Jimmy Fund, you know, they they uh, came up with the early form of chemotherapy, then did essentially PR maneuvers like the Jimmy Fund to get the public on board and really get everyone to care about this important issue. And they eventually kind of turned that into sort of political action. They took out these full page spreads in the New York Times and the Washington Post that was basically like Nixon, like, what the heck are you doing? You know, get on this. Um, and it was a really instructive, like one, two, three model. So we're basically trying to follow that. We're in like step two now. You know, we have interesting research that's, you know, bearing interesting results. Now we're sort of catalyzing that movement of people to care about it, which is now in turn helping to wake up investors and governments and uh, even international organizations like the World Health Organization. So chip in 10 bucks and you might live 10 years more. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, well, probably you, you a actually, bit of an exaggeration, but well, well I, I got some numbers for that on you, uh, for you, Jenk. Actually, for a project like this, if you basically some numbers that matter here are 150,000 people die every single day, and over two thirds of this is due to the diseases of aging, Alzheimer's, heart disease, cancer. So that's 100,000 people every day, one person every second. So by that math, if a project like this, if, if you donating to a project like this moves the needle up on curing those diseases by even one day, you will have saved multiple lives. So the math is there. It's, it's you know, compare that to the old, you know, for a price of a cup of coffee, uh, you know, marketing or, or, you know, fundraising initiatives in the past. The value proposition here is, is honestly staggering. Well, staying alive is a pretty good value proposition. Um, <laughs> and look, it's uh, an interesting, at times depressing, but I, I don't think so. I, I just, I think it's a fascinating overall topic. But it, I don't want people to get the wrong impression. It's not, I'm not saying this to be macabre, I'm saying because you should treasure life. It, just in the span of this interview, based on those numbers, 600 people will die while we're doing this interview across the country. I'm sorry, and across the world. No, 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 that's not true. 3,600 people will die uh, because it's one per second or minute? One per, one per second. One per yeah. second, yeah, whatever, a lot of people are gonna die. All right, <laughs> so um, uh, now the main question, really, can you really extend life and how would you do it? Yes, the answer is really and some of it will be coming uh, soon. The important thing to realize, though, is obviously when you enter this topic, you get super polarized immediately, just like everything else. You know, oh, it's you know, do you want to die or immortality? You know, nothing in between. When the real answer here is that this is going to happen through a bootstrapping process. So, for example, in the next five years, I would say, uh, fair to say, we're going to see some therapies that might be able to extend lifespan by five, ten percent. 
And then, you know, that gives us more time to work on better therapies that can rejuvenate or uh, remediate more damages. To give you one example of probably like one of the hottest topics uh, right now is uh, uh, senolytics. So there are these things called uh, senescent cells, basically, your cells can enter kind of a zombie state as you get older. It's not cancerous, your cells don't divide, but they sort of secrete these toxins that turn other cells around them into zombies too, and you build up this burden throughout your life. So there's a new class of drugs on the horizon right now that basically cause these cells to you know, self-destruct as they should have, but some of them hadn't, and clear out of the body. And this is showing some extremely exciting results and some of the, you know, rest of the world, you know, investors are waking up to this. There was a company that just raised hundreds of millions of dollars for one of the first senolytic therapies to hit, to hit the market or coming soon, entering human trials. Do they kill the zombie cells by hitting them in the head? Uh, you know, only if it's between the eyes, I think, you know, okay, that's the right. rule, right? You know, depending right. on the movie. <laughs> so no, seriously, um, I, I'm all, I was always curious. Um, so if you pre prevent you can't prevent aging, but you extend aging, right, in a sense, is or you extend life. Do you do you also extend aging? I don't know if I'm asking it right, uh, but like the, I, I the physical I, attributes of aging. Yeah, I, I got the heart of the, the the question here, and this is actually an important issue that we have to you know address when we deal with the public. Because if you ask someone off the street, hey, do you want to live 150 years old? Most people would rightly say. No, because they think of a hundred year old person, you know, in a decrepit state and that persisting for 50 years and, and very few people would want that, right? But the key thing to note here is that if you look at the statistics behind it, the only way you're gonna get any sort of maximal life extension is if you have youth health extension. So for example, if you were a hundred years old now, you know, without these interventions, and I were to wave a magic wand and stop your aging completely, you're still probably not gonna make it for too many more years because you're gonna get pneumonia, you're gonna fall and break your hip because you're frail. So these therapies, the key thing here is that this is about, this is going to rejuvenate your system because uh, a lot of it too is just piggybacking on what your body already does. It's just you build up damage over time. Just like, think of it like a car. If you maintain a car well, it keeps running well, and you don't need sophisticated tools to keep it running well. But if you let the car age and then the axle breaks, now suddenly you need an arc welder and it's more costly and expensive to fix. And this translates to healthcare costs as well. So maybe we can get into that. So uh, more importantly, uh, is there, I'm 48. Any chance that it's done in enough time uh, to save my ass? Obviously, uh, you know, I can't get in trouble about being too speculative, but you know, I would say that Conservatively, I would guess that we're, you know, people, I'm similar to you. We're probably in the 50 50 range of really seeing significant extension. Again, this is speculation. I would say, like you said in one of your earlier uh, pieces of coverage, if it's not us, it's looking very good for our children. Uh, this is coming. And one exciting point I want to mention here is that. Uh, this dream of sort of addressing the diseases of aging has been around with us since literally the dawn of civilization. The first thing ever written, first great work, the Epic of Gilgamesh is all about this. And it's not magic, it's science, you know, physics. It's going to get solved at some point, whether it takes 50 years, 100 years, 200 years. And that means that people right now, we are in this special, unique place in, in human history. We get to choose to fight for it. We get to to finish the first hero's journey together collectively. That will affect you know everyone on the planet and everyone who comes after us. So it's in, in my opinion, epic and and awesome, and everyone should be excited about it because well, it's a big deal. Well, you guys are literally looking for the fountain of youth. Uh, <laughs> I, I believe we've done that a couple of times, but in this case, you're actually looking in the right place. It turns out it's not in Florida, and it's not <laughs> in ancient lands. Uh, it's in science. It's in our own bodies, and all we have to do is study it. And so I want people to think about it this way, because this is, look, it's as important as any topic you could imagine, because if you had a chance to extend your kids' lives by 20 years, would you do it? I would, <laughs> right? assuming, assuming my kid wanted to. Yeah, yeah uh, unless, like, there's been some Republican kids now speaking out against their dads. So maybe <laughs> some cases, but overall, 99.9% .9 of you would say, of course, of course yeah. I would do it. And, and the real way to think of this too is what it really is doing just like all medicine is it is extending choice, right? That doesn't mean that someone's gonna force you to live 50 more years if you don't want to. But there's a lot of instructing, uh, instructive like 
psychological studies here, or you know, it has to do with the way that you think about the future. So for example, if you ask a 20 year old, do you wanna to live to be 90? You know, that might be a 50-50 of people who would say yes. If you ask a healthy 89 year old who loves their family, is having a great time, do they wanna be 90? You better believe they're saying yes. So it's all about the perspective here. And that's why it's so important to realize that this is, this is health. And again, this, this isn't just for the individual. This also has massive socioeconomic uh, impact here because, you know, as you guys talked about before, you know, the uh, population is, is skewing older, the demographics, baby boomers, uh, birth rates are dropping. So with that kind of backdrop, Systems like Social Security and Medicare are in for a world of hurt if we don't age healthier as a society and add more to the productive health years. And people in government are aware of this. There just isn't enough uh, will yet to act on it. In Japan, it's actually uh, a catastrophe right now. It's called the gray tsunami, if you've heard of that, where more baby di- more adult diapers are being sold right now than baby diapers. And you know the healthcare costs are, are, are tragic because of that. I mean, wow. So, no, you know, I, it's, we, I, we have to get on this issue. I had not heard about the diaper epidemic in Japan. Um, uh, so, uh, and by the way, if you're thinking, well, more people are going to live older than uh, or live longer, so that's going to we would not uh, compound the problem. But no, but they would be healthier as they lived longer. And so, super last thing, even though we're way over time, uh, but this topic's too interesting, Keith. Um, the the mouse project, uh, the NAD uh, plus mouse. What what was that? Yeah, so you covered this last year. I believe your exact words were, uh, I'm not messing around with NAD, that stuff is happening. So basically what this is, is this is uh, the work of Dr. David Sinclair from Harvard. Um, It has to do with NAD+, which is a coenzyme that's basically involved in energy production, you know, ATP, generation, the Krebs cycle. Um, And this declines with age. So the research that you had covered last year was uh, David's lab added uh, NMN, to um, basically to the the drinking water of the mice. And NMN is a precursor that essentially turns into NAD, right? So when they did that and restored the levels uh, of NAD, it created all these great physiological changes. The mice were a 60-year-old equivalent mouse was indistinguishable from a 20-year-old equivalent mouse. So what this research that we're crowdfunding now on uh, lifespan.io slash NMN is an extension of that. So the earlier trial was just like a couple of weeks. This one is going uh, for years to look, does it actually make the mouse live healthier longer and improve their lifespan? And the the campaign is ending in like 30 hours and it needs only a couple of thousand dollars left. So I need everyone to panic to borrow your phrase <laughs> and, and get there right now and let's finish this together because we've all been on this you know journey together uh, to fight the diseases of aging since you know we've been around but we just didn't even know that because it's always been hopeless but now it's not so if you want to live longer and healthier you can help us you can be a true rebel against you know aging and death if you want to get grandiose about it yeah. but it's a big deal so uh, Keith uh, doesn't just talk to talk he walks the walk did you see how he extended the life of that light in his room <laughs> <laughs> okay I'm using like my TV as background light and my my uh, computer dampened so I had to no, you know, no, don't tell him how the it. magic's done oh uh, you're right <laughs> <laughs> okay so everybody speaking of magic the website is lifespan.io uh, and you can donate uh, at lifespan.io slash hero, and you can learn more about it at lifespan.io slash learn. Uh, Keith, thank, thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Jack. The TYT Plus app is now available on iOS and Android. Download to get more TYT content at tyt.com slash app.